What happens in your brain when you experience positive emotions like joy, pride, awe, or love? In this video, we'll explore the roles of the prefrontal cortex and the interior cingulate cortex in fostering these positive feelings, while also providing evidence-based tools to enhance and increase positive emotions in your daily life. Now, pleasure is an essential quality of good feelings. Now, I won't be delving into pleasure in this video, but if you're interested, you can check out my videos on the neuroscience of pleasure and on the role of the pleasure cycle in happiness. So let's now focus on the neurobiological nature of positive emotions and how you can leverage this understanding to cultivate more good feelings in your day-to-day -day life. One pattern that seems to pop up again and again in the neuroscience of positive emotions is the idea that the left forebrain is more strongly associated with positive feelings while the right is more concerned with negative feelings. While this doesn't hold for all brain regions, it does seem to be true for parts of the prefrontal cortex. This seems to be especially true for the left dorsolateral PFC, that is the outer edges of the PFC near the upper surface of the brain's left hemisphere. In general, the DLPFC as a whole is involved in the ability to stop a task that you're already engaged in, like braking suddenly while you're driving to avoid an accident on the way to work, or to inhibit a behavior that's mostly automatic, like remembering to take a left turn instead of your usual right turn on your drive to work because you're picking up a coworker today. Now the DLPFC is also crucial for working memory, which is the capacity to keep information at the front of your mind, like remembering to send that important email when you do finally arrive at work. And it's also important for memory retrieval, which we'll see in just a second. The left DLPFC in particular is important for tasks that involve verbal reasoning, like a task where you have to come up with as many words as you can that fit into a given category. And that's kind of the same process involved in solving a crossword puzzle. And that makes sense given that the brain's language producing regions are almost entirely in the left hemisphere. But how does the left DLPFC actually make us feel happier? While this question is not yet fully answered, one reason may be that the left DLPFC is also involved in the process of forming and retrieving memories. So stimulating the left DLPFC can help people to recall positive information from memory. In people with major depression, some studies have shown that they have lower activity in their left DLPFC, and one effective treatment for depression involves directly stimulating the left DLPFC with a technique called repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation. Now to speculate a bit, I wonder if the fact that the DLPFC being involved in verbal reasoning and inhibition might help explain this positivity enhancing quality. That is, maybe stimulating the left DLPFC helps depressed patients to verbalize and thereby reframe negative thoughts and experiences. And in fact, a number of studies suggest that stimulating the DLPFC while a person is recalling a memory can disrupt the memory and make it more difficult to recall later on. Maybe the left DLPFC can be that voice of optimistic reason in our head, telling us to reconceptualize failure or disappointment as a learning opportunity rather than a mark of shame. We'll return to this idea in a minute when we get to our first positive emotion enhancing tool, but first I just wanna talk about another region of the prefrontal cortex that's relevant to positive emotions, and that's the medial prefrontal cortex. This area includes the regions of the PFC closest to the midline that separates the two hemispheres of the brain. This area is crucial for thinking about ourselves, especially about who we are, our life story, and our place in social groups and in society at large. In fact, the medial PFC is a key node in the brain's default mode network, which is a collection of dynamically interacting brain regions that seems to activate when we aren't really doing anything in particular. And when we think about ourselves or our future, which is kind of our default state. Now you can imagine that the MPFC and the default mode network have an important role to play in how positively we see ourselves and our life's trajectory. In fact, research has shown that the degree to which the medial PFC communicates with another region in the default mode network called the precuneus is correlated with meaning in life. 
And that makes sense given the precuneus's role in various cognitive functions, including memory retrieval like the DLPFC and self-referential processing. So you combine those together and you can start to see why the connection between these two regions would have something to do with our sense of meaning in life. Okay, now all this brings us to our first tool for enhancing and increasing our own positive emotions in day-to-day -day life. Life is full of setbacks and disappointments and even outright failures, but when those things happen, you have a choice. Your first option is to tell yourself that you failed because that's simply your level of ability. You failed because you're as good as you're gonna get. Maybe someone betrayed you because life is unfair or you're just unlovable. This first option will lead you down an ugly path, strewn with negative emotions and feelings of shame and worthlessness, and the notion that you are what you are, a failure. So there's no point in trying again. Now, the second and much better option is to use your words to rationally reframe the situation. You can acknowledge the setback while staying firmly committed to creating a better future for yourself. Reinterpret the memory of failure. You failed because you haven't learned all the skills you need, or maybe you didn't employ the right skills, or maybe you just need to sit down, evaluate your performance, find what went well, what didn't, and what you can do better next time. That person betrayed you not because you're unlovable, but because the relationship wasn't right. And there were specific reasons for that. Reasons that you can learn to pay attention to in future relationships. That's just one example. But the point is to consciously verbalize that failure is a chance to see how you can succeed in the future. It's not something to be ashamed of. Use words to describe the silver lining, however slim it may first seem. Take time to journal, or if you're like me, take a walk and literally talk to yourself. Talk through each step. Remember that identifying what went wrong is not about guilt or shame. Instead, it's about looking at your performance through a magnifying glass so that you can replicate the many things you did well while pinpointing important areas of improvement. It's about creating future success. Okay, so the next brain region we're gonna talk about is the anterior cingulate cortex. This is a strip of tissue just under the frontal cortex and above the nerve tracts that connect the right hemisphere to the left. Now, while the ACC plays a role in negative emotion too, we'll see that it may be especially important for positive emotion. The ACC seems to guide attention to positive stimuli when it's contextually appropriate and it evaluates the effort required to do anything at all. Now to begin, I wanna highlight the ability of attention to shift the valence of our experience and our understanding of the world. Research has shown that when we focus on what we're doing, even when it's not really something we wanna be doing, we are much happier than when we allow our minds to drift to more desirable dreams and possibilities. It's one reason why states of mindfulness and flow are so beneficial to our well being. The anterior cingulate cortex is important for guiding our attention, getting started on a task, and staying engaged with that task. It's also been shown to activate during mindfulness meditation and during tasks involving emotion regulation. More precisely, the ACC is often parceled into two subregions the dorsal, which means near the back, like a dorsal fin on a shark, and rostral, which means near the nose or beak. The rostral ACC is involved in identifying the emotional significance of stimuli, in stopping us from having our attention captured by irrelevant but emotionally significant distractors, and in identifying errors or inconsistencies in cognition. The rostral ACC is also important in evaluating the effort involved in carrying out a given task, and possibly even in the experience of effort when we perform that task. Similar to the left DLPFC, the rostral ACC contains an area that's been targeted for stimulation in severely depressed patients. This is called the subgenual ACC. And studies by the pioneering scientist Helen Mayberg have shown that deep brain stimulation of this region can rapidly relieve symptoms of depression, including a lack of motivation and anhedonia, which is the inability to feel pleasure. Now, studies by other researchers have shown that neurons of the rostral ACC are more densely connected in people who report higher levels of happiness, and that rostral ACC activity 
increases when people's moods are lifted in an experimental setting. Now, together, these results suggest that the rostral ACC is important for our experience of positive emotions, possibly via its role in motivation and in guiding our attention to positive stimuli. It probably does this via its connections to the prefrontal cortex, as well as regions involved in motivated behavior, like the basal ganglia, and regions involved in emotion and arousal, like the amygdala. Okay, but what about the dorsal ACC? First, I just wanna note that the dorsal ACC, like the DLPFC, may also be involved in labeling or describing emotions and in the process of reappraisal, reappraising the emotional significance of our experiences. Interestingly, the dorsal ACC is important for the specific emotion of awe. In a 2018 study by Fang Guan and colleagues, the gray matter volume of the dorsal ACC has been found to negatively correlate with dispositional awe. So what that means is that people who answer yes to questions like, I often feel awe, I see beauty all around me, I feel wonder almost every day, and I seek out experiences that challenge my understanding, also tend to have smaller dorsal ACCs. Now the psychologist and pioneering awe researcher, Dacher Keltner, describes awe as, quote, the emotion we experience when we experience vast mysteries that we don't understand, end quote. And so awe may represent our brain's amazement at having to assimilate these mysterious phenomena into our understanding of the world. Combining this definition of awe with the observation noted earlier that the ACC is involved in motivated behavior may help to explain the association between the dorsal ACC and dispositional awe. As Guan and colleagues write, People with higher dispositional awe may have, quote, an increased propensity to embrace cognitive accommodation and new knowledge, end quote. So people who are more likely to frequently experience awe may also be more motivated to assimilate new knowledge into their understanding of the world. But to be completely clear, this is a really new area of neuroscience so we should be careful not to overinterpret what is really a correlation. This brings us to our second tool for enhancing positive emotional experiences. Engage with life and focus on the good. Understanding the importance of the ACC in guiding attention and maintaining engagement in tasks highlights the value of mindfulness and being fully present in our activities. Engaging in mindfulness practices like meditation or mindful walking help develop your ability to focus. A simple technique you can use, even if you don't regularly meditate, is to look out a window or even at a blank wall and pick one point and keep your gaze fixed on it. Every time your eyes or your mind wander from that point, gently bring it back. Try this for five or 10 minutes a day and you'll probably be surprised by how difficult it really is, but also by how it can improve your powers of focus over time. If you're not really into meditation, just remember this quote. Wherever you are, be there. This is from the motivational author, Jim Ron, And it's always helped me to re-engage with what I'm doing because it reminds me of the benefits of focusing on whatever task I happen to be engaged with. Now, on top of consciously engaging more with life in general, it's important to focus on the good parts of life. The rostral ACC's role in orienting our attention toward positive stimuli reminds us that seeing the good and the beautiful things in life isn't always automatic, but you can train it to be more automatic over time. In many ways, our brains respond more strongly to negative information than to positive information. This is a phenomenon known as the negativity bias. Now, I'm not saying that we should ignore tragedies, nor that we should downplay bad things that do occur, but instead we should seek out positive information People who are rationally optimistic tend to not only have higher well being, but are also more efficacious in their own lives. Focusing on what is good and beautiful in the world and in your own life is a potent way of building more positive emotions into your daily life. One emotion worth cultivating is awe. In his book, Awe, Dacher Keltner, who I mentioned earlier, identifies the most common causes for awe for people across the world. He calls these the eight wonders of life, and they are moral beauty, nature, collective effervescence, art, music, spirituality, epiphany, and life and death. Now, while most of these are self-explanatory, I wanna clarify a couple. 
Moral beauty can be defined as the type of feeling you get when you see someone do something heroic or extremely kind or simply an extraordinarily good act, like saving a child from drowning or rehabilitating an abused animal. Collective effervescence, on the other hand, refers to the kind of enthusiasm and liveliness that emerges in a crowd at a big concert or a music festival or religious ceremony or really anywhere where people gather to celebrate collectively or engage in something important. However you get awe, the result will be the same, an overwhelming feeling of amazement and being an intimate part of something vast and beautiful. Okay, so before summarizing this video, I need to give credit where credit is due. The primary source for this video is a comprehensive 2021 review on the Neuroscience of Positive Emotions published in the journal Neuroscience and Biobehavioral Reviews. Rebecca Alexander of the Australian National University is the first lead author, but there are 16 other authors. This was a big paper. Now this brings me to my first caveat. I did not fully explain the neuroscience of positive emotions, and this is a very complicated topic that is really only just becoming a serious scientific field. In the future, I do plan to make more videos about the neuroscience of positive emotions, and I wanna focus on brain regions, networks, and neurochemical systems other than the ones I discussed here. All right, let's summarize this video. The left forebrain is associated with positive feelings while the right is associated with negative feelings. And that's true for the left prefrontal cortex, especially the left dorsolateral PFC, which is more active during positive emotions. This brain region may help us to reframe negative thoughts, disrupt negative memories, and inhibit rumination. The medial prefrontal cortex, or MPFC, is important for our self-concept, our life story, and our social connections. And the MPFC precuneus communication correlates with life meaning. Our first tool was to use words to grow your mindset in the face of failure. So reframe setbacks, acknowledge areas of improvement, and commit to future improvement. The anterior cingulate cortex plays a role in positive emotions, in attention, in motivation, and effort evaluation. It activates during mindfulness meditation and emotion regulation tasks. Rostral ACC activity increases with positive mood. The dorsal ACC may be involved in labeling emotions and reappraising emotional significance. The dorsal ACC may be involved in the emotion of awe because smaller dorsal ACC volume correlates with higher dispositional awe. Our second tool was to engage with life and focus on the good and beautiful. Cultivating awe can enhance positive emotions and promote the assimilation of new knowledge and the eight wonders of life that induce awe are moral beauty, nature, collective effervescence, art, music, spirituality, epiphany, and life and death. All right, well, that's it. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Sense of Mind. Do not forget to like and subscribe to this channel. And if you really wanna help me to continue to make videos like this, please become a patron on Patreon and you'll get exclusive access to live streams as well as written versions of all new videos, including this one. So go to patreon.com slash sense of mind to sign up. And if you want to stay up to date with sense of mind, sign up for the newsletter at senseofmindshow.com newsletter. All right. Thanks again. I'll catch you next time.